360. Today, All right, again, hello, everybody. Welcome back, those who are following us. And welcome, great to have you with us, the, those people who just discovered our podcast. We meet every Thursday at 4 p.m. Eastern time, and we are talking with many interesting, knowledgeable, experienced people who are helping us and sharing with us their information about how to manage diabetes, how to win this um, situation and be in charge. And today I have a very special guest, uh, Cindy Tro. We met, interestingly enough, on the event that is called Walk with the Dog. Every, there is an organization, it's called walk with the dog it it has a lot of chapters around the country and doctors organize those little walks some people have it every month some people have it several times a month and this is when we get together we have a chat with the doctor we have a chat with somebody uh, who maybe has a presentation and then we walk we go for a walk and we walk around the park or whatever area you have so Last month, I came to walk with one of my favorite doctors, Dr. Bob's, and here she is, the presenter, Cindy Tro, and she was talking about important topic that we are going to talk today about. So, Cindy, first of all, please say hi and tell us who you are, what are you doing, why diabetes, all that interesting information. Okay. Well, thank you for having me and I love to come and chat. I um, am a person who has always loved health and we know that health is our greatest wealth. So I always held it very near and dear to my heart and do everything healthy. And um, life kind of threw a curveball at me at the age of 50. And I went to the doctor one day and walked out a diabetic. And I was like, how did that happen? I'm a healthy person. So here to tell you, healthy people get diabetes in mid midlife, right? And yes. so I had to learn how to navigate that and navigating my nutrition was really easy for me because that's just what I did in my world. But um, there were some other parts of my lifestyle that needed some changes and upgrading. And, um, and I pursued that because my mission is to be the healthiest diabetic on the planet. So I yeah. hope have some company coming alongside with me and, and joining my mission about being the healthiest diabetic on the planet. And I got lucky enough in my second career to um, share this with the world. Absolutely. Yes. Cindy has a pre had a presentation for us at, at that walk. And she was talking about, in light of this holiday season coming up, how we can help ourselves how we can manage what we are doing how we can help others during this stressful and stressful season of holidays also that involves a lot of gatherings a lot of different kinds of food that we don't usually eat on a regular basis a lot of activities that involve something that we again don't do regularly and late nights and travel so with that um i just curious uh, who picked the topic when you were talking with dr bobs who picked the topic what you're going to talk about well I, you know, I, I don't remember, but it, navigating the holidays the healthy way is like one of my favorite, favorite topics to talk about. And so Dr. Babs being right on in alignment with me, I think we probably brought it up together. So, yeah, it was cool. Absolutely. Yes. And there were there were a lot of great tips that you gave to people. And this was enlightening. Mm -hmm. And it also interesting because you are talking about it. Uh, it's it's 
doable, the most important part. What what do you say? Why did you choose that approach, the doable? Because I hear so often in our Facebook group, Diabetes 101 for Beginners, when people are saying, oh, diabetes is so hard. I have to change everything. I cannot eat anything that I love. And how do I explain it to my family? Because they have to change now or i need to cook for everybody different several meals and every meal mm -hmm. so what was it uh, your approach how is it why did you find this uh how did you find this uh easy thing well i think anytime you're trying to make a change you have you can jump into the deep end of the pool you know you you have to go slow you have to educate yourself and so we know mm -hmm. that being a diabetic, that sugar is not our friend, but sugar is not anybody else's friend either. So, yes. you know, it, it's actually become a blessing to me. And when, you know, you prepare mo foods for your family, not necessarily does everybody eat everything. So you make sure mm -hmm. that there's enough on your plate that is healthy for you as a diabetic. And then if you have children or you have spouses that don't follow your regimen, they could have the healthy carb on the side. But what you might find happening is if you model the health, they'll they'll go alongside you. And if you do it as a family unit, and mm -hmm. then you while you're not sitting at the table, then you'll have more buy-in and people will understand it better. But I think it is our job to educate people, you know, hey, listen, I'm choosing to eat healthy. Because, mm -hmm. it, you know, it, it's good for my body. It's good for my diabetes. And, and um, you know, happy to be here and make the choices that serve me. And I hope that you will love me enough to, to allow me to do that. And you enjoy the foods that serve you as well. Definitely. You know, I um, as I said, we, ha we hear this so often when people say, my spouse, my family members, my kids are uh, so not eating what I eat. Mm -hmm. It tells me that most likely you're probably not enjoying what you eat either. You are forcing yourself to do that because you know that this is what your body needs at the moment. Mm -hmm. But um, somehow I do remember we were looking for recipes and choosing our food items uh that will be good for everybody exactly that if if i know that having dessert every night is not a healthy idea in the first place why would i feed my kids with that mm -hmm. every night mm -hmm. right yeah and, and you know so really being able to role model and go shopping with your family and and help them educate them and teach them and have them go and saying is this healthy you know let's look at this label how much sugar does this have you know what does sugar do in our body but there are enough um substitutes for pasta you know a lot mm -hmm. of us have heard of zoodles you know um zucchini yeah. where we could take the zucchini and shred it and make it look like pasta and then when you put all the other ingredients in you really could have a very healthy meal and everybody could enjoy that so it's really exactly. learning how to put cauliflower rice in instead of you know regular rice in and and if you don't tell anybody they might not know but no <laughs> you know you know there there's there's lots of healthy substitutes out there and i think that's what you have to educate people on and i'll be happy to share a little healthy recipe book for you to all get started so we can you know, yeah. share that out, but it's about educating your family. And if you could start your, your young child eating healthy, like what a beautiful gift you're giving them. Yes, definitely. Definitely. I actually, interesting observation in my family happened uh, a while ago when we did switch to healthier uh, way of eating and cooking. And one of the things that I implemented, uh, we did not use oil when cooking mm -hmm. sometimes you need a little bit but my majority of of, of my cooking were without oil mm -hmm. and my kids 
they didn't really understand much about it. The food is in front of them. They are eating. They are satisfied. It's nothing different. It just cooked without oil, but they didn't stay behind my back and watch what did I do next to the next to the stove, right? Exactly. And then they told me, Mom, when we go to those parties, our birthday friend, you know, friends' birthdays parties and stuff. All food is it's so greasy. Mm -hmm. And I was like, aha, you see the difference now. And 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 they like I didn't eat it. Mm -hmm. I just had a piece of cake and I, I couldn't eat that. Mm -hmm. And I was really happy to hear this. And this is, I believe, how we can influence the taste, because as, as our nutritionists say, uh, our taste buds change every two weeks. So 14 days, you just need to wait for 14 days mm -hmm. and then uh, you will acquire, you may acquire a different taste. Yeah, and you could, you acquire a different taste, but you also learn how to create a taste that the whole family would, would really enjoy. Yeah. And, you know, it, it's about too, about how you put your plate together. You know, mm -hmm. so, you know, while there could be lots of things on the table, you know, if you feel, you know, as a person that's watching your health, whether you have diabetes or not have diabetes and there's salad and there's protein and there's French fries, you know, um, you know, you just put, fill your, you know, half your plate up with vegetables and protein. And, and if you feel like you have to, or want to put a French fry or a couple on your plate, you know, that's fine, but it, that's not going to actually serve you, but it, you know, a few wouldn't harm you, but you, there are lots of healthy carbohydrate choices that are yeah. delicious, you know, and it's really understanding that and learning that along the way. Yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. I totally agree with you. Mm -hmm. And this is what we we learn from our people in the group when they are discussing the changes that they made, mm -hmm. uh, some of them are suffering some of them had to make dramatic changes mm -hmm. and primarily because they didn't know they nobody explained them anything about this concept of macronutrients all this what is healthy for your body what feeds your body and what is not so healthy for your body so nobody explained them and being in the group, they learned this from other people, from different uh, sources that uh, we are providing and they find themselves also. But uh, there were also a lot of people who, or not were, are, a lot of people who just saying, hey, I just discovered that radish, when you bake it, tastes just like potatoes. Mm -hmm. We had this dinner tonight and nobody even, you know, questioned what it is. They thought that this is potato <laughs> and that was radish. Mm -hmm. So yeah, there's different there's, discoveries. Yeah. There, there's, there's lots of tips like that, you know, making cauliflower mashed potatoes. I mean, I have made uh -huh. cauliflower potato salad that nobody knew it was cauliflower. So there, oh, there, are, uh -huh. there are many tricks like that to, to, to be had. And, and, mm -hmm. and, and having to, knowing what your, your, the, the, knowing the glycemic level in foods, which basically means how much sugar is in, in your foods and really knowing which ones are going to serve you. Like just even in vegetables, we say vegetables are healthy or fruits are healthy. Yes, they're very healthy. But for a diabetic, when you're looking at that, you need to look at, well, how much sugar does that have in it? You know, mm -hmm. just like if you're looking at peas, and you're looking at cucumbers, mm -hmm. which one is better for you? Yeah. Okay. I would say cucumbers from the diabetic standpoint. <laughs> uh, cucumbers from the diabetic standpoint, they're both great vegetables, but yeah. the one that's low glycemic, lower in sugar is going to serve you. Right. Yeah. And so yeah. that's what we're looking for. We're looking for having um, low sugar and balancing your proteins and carbs so your body doesn't keep on asking for the wrong foods. Mm -hmm. Exactly, exactly. And and this is important part of uh, providing body with the nutrients that it needs to function mm -hmm. and to, to use resources that 
we provide and what it already has because very often the situation being like in the past the cooking coach i know that a little talk i had with with customers when uh, we were talking like people very often when they are hungry they grab something mm -hmm. that snack without really thinking i am putting it into my mouth because i'm hungry you are hungry because your body is giving you a kind of like signal hey mm -hmm. I need some energy to function. And instead of giving a good source of energy, which is some of the macronutrients that our bodies need, we give the potato chip or popcorn or something like that, that body processes really fast or piece of toast or cookie, right? It goes really fast through and body is again saying, hey, I need food and you again throwing something in. But if we provide something that has the good nutrient nutrition value, that will be a totally different story. No needs to pro to eat every 40 minutes. Exactly. So I got a great tip on this and this is just really yeah. simple. So our body is going to crave what we put into it. So if you eat a lot of sugar late in food, guess what it's going to keep on asking for sugar, right? Mm -hmm. And okay. to keep the hunger down, I really truly believe that we all benefit from eating six small meals a day every two to three hours. So you, the hunger doesn't have time to, to, to grow. And, and mm -hmm. the best way to keep that is every two to three hours, making sure that you have a protein. Okay, because mm -hmm. and if and because you are going to grab a carb, and if you grab a healthy carb like an apple, and you put some string cheese with it, it's going to keep you satiated, and it's going to keep your blood sugars level. And when your blood sugars are level, it's not going to ask, "Please give me more carbohydrates. Please give me more carbohydrates," because that's when you go mm -hmm. for that comfort food. That's when you're going to go for the foods that don't serve you. So yeah. um, really, truly, the gift is you could start doing it today. Eat five to six small meals a day. Make sure there's a protein that's showing up at the table. And you can make some really easy choices that are easy grab and go options. Yeah, yeah. Well, five or six meals, you're talking about meals, meals or three meals and, and a couple yeah, of snacks. It, it's like, you know, in, 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 in the world of, of, of us folks, it's like, you could have three healthy meals, which you typically uh -huh. know is breakfast, lunch, and dinner. And, and I would say, look at the, your plate size too. That's really, that's another thing. Control yeah. your portions because the more we eat, guess what, how well we get. Oh, uh -huh. you know, fall asleep. Yeah. So eat off a smaller plate and, you know, have your healthy foods there and make sure that that makes up most of your plate. Like I said before, your veggies and your protein and, you know, have your healthy carb, you know, sitting on the side. Um, but um, yeah, so, and then three healthy snacks a day. So it could be like an apple and string cheese, um, low sugar Greek yogurt, and, you know, some berries. Um, berries are excellent source of nutrients. Um, mm -hmm. So those are just, you know, a couple of things that you could grab some nuts and some yogurt, you know, you know, some, you know, an apple yeah. or an orange, um, but looking at the fruits too, like we're going into winter season. A lot of those fruits are, are lower in sugar than our summer fruits. Like our honeydews and our melons are very high in sugar. And so those are our sometimes fruits when we're watching the level of sugar that our we're taking in on our bodies. Yes. Yes. You, you're right. I do remember reading that the winter carrots, less sweet than the, the summer carrots mm -hmm. and i think this applies to many other fruits and veggies that we use mm -hmm. the in the summer they have more sun they create more um very what is this composition is a little different because of the different time how much sunlight we have how much uh dark time we have and all this this is a different story okay uh, Cindy, now I would like to, we have not that much time left, and I still would like to hear your tips that you had for us on a walk, and I would like our listeners also to have them, uh, to, ha to hear them, because this is very useful. Um, anytime a year, 
but during the holiday season, it's specifically uh, helpful. Yeah, it is because there's just so many distractions, right? And yeah. and so we we have to, you know, the whole thing is is awareness and and deciding in advance what do you want. So before we even step mm -hmm. into next week, before we step into the holiday season, what do you want that to look like? You know, how do, how do you want to navigate the buffet tables? How do you want to navigate, you know, all the activities that you have to do? What are you going to say yes to? And what are you going to say no to? Like, are you going to go to, you know, every event that you're invited to? Are you, you know, or are you going to prioritize so that you can take good care of yourself? So really decide what is important to you. How do I keep those habits alive? during this distracting season, it's going to require you to say no to some things, right? And, and how do you want to navigate going to the parties? Not only do we have to navigate the food table, but we get together with family and family sometimes has a little friction going on in there, but you know what to expect, don't you? It's not a surprise. It's not a surprise. So in advance, just kind of mentally go through what obstacles you think are going to be showing up, whether it's food or people, and how are you going to respond to that and have a support person, whether you're going with, you know, your spouse, your significant other, you know, maybe they need to kick you under the table or something like that. I don't know what just yeah. a look of love, um, but really being prepared and making those decisions beforehand and um, bring a mantra with you, you know, I, you know, I, I, I want to look healthy. I want to feel healthy. I want to be sexy in my body, whatever it is that is going to help mm -hmm. you make the right decision for what you're choosing to do. So come along with a mantra that's going to support whatever obstacle is going to show up in your face. So mm -hmm. here's, here's a couple of tips I want. Instead of reacting and grabbing something, stop, take a drink of water, and give your brain time to go from reactionary to response and decide, do I really want this? Is this how mm -hmm. I want to respond to Aunt Susie? Do I want mm -hmm. to eat the whole apple pie or do I want to have just three bites? And the three bite rule is a beautiful thing to bring to um, a party. And we get 95% of our satisfaction of food in the first three bites. The yes. First bite, we say hello. The second bite, we savor the failure flavor. And the third bite, we say goodbye. And guess what? You're going to feel good doing that. Okay. Definitely. Um, yeah. When it comes to navigating the drinks, decide what you want. Again, do I want those sugar alcohol drinks that are not going to support my health? Or do I want to have, you know, some sparkling water, flavored water in a wine glass that will help me feel like I'm part of the group? but it won't actually spike my sugar or do some other things that I'm, that are not in alignment with what I'm doing. And mm -hmm. um, if you're going to choose alcohol for a party, then do something that's a distilled alcohol with a diet soda. No, it, it's not a habit of health, but it, if that's going to be a choice, it's going to serve you in a much better way because it doesn't have the carbs and the sugars in it that are going to set you on yeah. fire. Um, one plate at a time. No going back for seconds. Fill the plate uh -huh. with the healthy foods first. And if there's something really special that's Thanksgiving special, you don't eat it the rest of the year, do what I just shared with you. A three-bite rule or a really small portion is really what's very helpful. Um, and um, if it's buffet style, go away from the table. Go get your plate. Find another room. Yeah. Because guess what happens when we sit by the buffet table? We Yes. We want more, right? And so, go for seconds. so we go back for seconds and um, the sweets come out on the table and you're like, you know, I, I, I really want to choose not to. So again, three bite rule works. If you want have a piece of gum, a mint, when you have mint in your mouth, you're not going after something sweet. So, mm -hmm. you know, do that and then go in the other room, focus on the people. If it's a beautiful yeah. day outside, have an activity that you could go out and be active and be active the rest of the day. So some people come to the Thanksgiving meal or the holiday party and they go, I'm going to starve myself all day. I'm not going to eat. I'm going to save all my calories. 
They eat a big meal. You feel really sleepy. That doesn't really work out for you very well. Eat healthy. Mm -hmm. Do not go to the party hungry. If you go to the party hungry, guess what you're going to do? You're going to make a lot of choices that after the party's over, you're not going to be really happy with. Okay. They're not going to serve you well. Have a small meal before you go. Mm -hmm. Able to make a whole lot better choices. Yes. Know. You're not hungry. Yeah. Not that's hungry. The, it's the same thing like when you go shopping, don't don't go hung, uh, shopping hungry, right? Mm -hmm. <laughs> don't go shopping hungry. And don't worry about what other people are thinking. If if someone offers you a piece of cake, you go, you know, that looks delicious. You know, I'm really full. I'm gonna wait a few minutes before I go and eat that because I, I just can't eat it right now. Nobody's gonna yeah. come back to you and say, did you eat the piece of cake? Did you have it? Or take it <laughs> and when, people, when someone's not looking, put it in the trash can. But, um, you know, so people are not really watching you. I think people think that people are watching you and go, oh gosh, she's got salad and veggies and protein on her plate. Where are her mashed potatoes and her stuff? I mean, yeah. I, don't, I don't think people are even on that plane. You know, they're not thinking yeah. about that. So I just say, do what's good for you. Do what you came to do and enjoy. And afterwards you could say, you know what? I'm really proud of myself. I made really good choices that were in line with my goals, my, my body and my health. And that's where I would go with that. Excellent. These are great ideas. Great suggestions and i think everybody can use it everybody can use it this is so easy mm -hmm. and and this way you participate you're an active participant everybody is free to choose so i choose this instead of that today this is my choice today nobody has to know about anything else and or worry about anything else i'm making my choices i am uh, the person in charge yeah. I mean, I'm feeling really good. I found a new way of being that makes me feel very energetic and, and um, it, it's changed my life and I'm, you know, I'm, I'm making choices that are going to continue to serve me in that direction. How could people argue with that? You know, how could people not, not be going, wow, that's really pretty amazing. And, you know, just yeah. maybe if you step out and do something like that, you're going to give somebody else courage to do something that, is might not be in their comfort zone. Exactly, exactly. Well, thank you, Cindy. We have two minutes for our latest announcements. So if you please tell us how people can reach out to you if they want to get in touch with you to maybe ask questions, what will be the best way to do that? Okay, so up on the screen, we see that there's my Calendly link. I'll be happy to do a 30-minute free explore call with you and talk health and talk about your goals or even how to navigate the holiday. And if you want more specific strategies, I'll be more than happy to serve you. So you can make an appointment with me there. My website is wellness. I mean, not my website, my um, email is wellness now at cindytrial.com. So you can contact me there as well. And I'm all over Facebook and Instagram as well. So you could find me Cindy Trow on Facebook and message me. I'm on there all the time. But most, I, I think the best way is going through Calendly and setting up an appointment with me. Okay. All right. Thank you. You're welcome. So my uh, little notes that I need to say for one thing, please don't forget that every Thursday we meet here. We have, well, <laughs> every Thursday we have this. Diabetes is speaking with Smart Move 360 podcast that goes live at 4 p.m. Eastern time. We will try to do this even on Thanksgiving. Let's see how it works. We also have every other Wednesday the support group meeting that meets in Zoom at 7 p.m. Eastern Eastern Standard Time, and we are meeting there to support each other, answer questions, find the solutions. We have the event coming up on the 2nd of December. This is Diabetic Healthcare Expo. Join us there. We'll go live on Facebook. You don't need to sign up. Just watch it. And I also wanted to say thank you to our sponsors. And these are Milk Life University, On Balance Entertainment, Live Based Solutions, and Empower People That Care. 
these are the companies thanks to them we have this opportunity to speak to all of you to provide all this information thank you very much for joining us see us on facebook linkedin uh, spotify and every other platform that has the podcast on it thank you cindy thank you. and we'll talk to you next week sounds perfect